Alrighty, <clears throat> Lecture 86, welcome back. Um, yeah, let's have a bit of fun. <sighs> Encoding and mnemonics. Um, all right, let's just jump right in here. We, we talk about human memory as having these three basic functions, encoding, storage, and retrieval, and that all of these three things have to work well for us to remember something. We have to encode it well, we have to store it, and then we have to eventually be able to retrieve it. If, if anything goes wrong at any of these three stages, our ability to remember will be um, impaired. And, and we're really talking about conscious memory here now. We're back into that sort of declarative kind of memory world is really what we're talking about. So we're going to focus on encoding. Encoding in this, in this talk today, encoding is the act of getting information into our long-term memory system through automatic or effortful processing. Now, we're going to talk mostly about the effortful, but the automatic you had an example of, and that example would have been that that um, Darren Brown video where, again, those guys were driven around the zoo and all those things. There they were seeing things, and the things they were seeing were getting into their memory, but it was happening in a much more automatic way. They weren't trying to remember those things. And because it was happening in that automatic way, it also had its impact much more through sort of the unconscious mind, right? Because these people weren't consciously trying to, to mem memorize things. We're going to talk more about the conscious, effortful processing when you're really trying to remember something and trying to get it into your long-term memory, kind of like you would do when you're studying. That's what we're going to talk about here. Okay, just to follow, storage is the retention of the information and retrieval is the act of the getting the information out of storage and back into conscious awareness, a a aka working memory through recall, recognition, and relearning. Okay, um, so we're really going to focus on encoding here. In, in this model's sense, this is where we are now. We've talked about working memory, where we think about stuff and do our problem solving. We've talked about long-term memory, that storage that we can pull things out of. What we often try to do when we try to memorize something is we get it from short, we want to get it from short-term memory. We're reading about it. We're learning about it now. We're experiencing it now. And we want to somehow store that in a way that will make it available later. That's what we're in calling encoding. Okay, uh, and really, that's what this this shouldn't say transfer. I, I it should say encoding um, would be the appropriate um, term that I would have there. Okay, now what the, the the long well the short story about memory encoding. You know, we all wish we could have a better memory. We could wish we could get things into our memory better. And the the simple answer is you can you can learn to get really good at putting things into memory, and you can have a really strong memory, but at a price. First, it'll take a lot of work, and secondly, there's some trade-offs at play. We'll come to the trade-offs later. Let me give you a sense of the work. Okay, so I think this is best done with an example. So first of all, let me mention there's this book called Moonwalking with Einstein that if you're interested in this issue of encoding and getting a better memory and how can you do that, this book will, will walk you through that. It's, it's a book about Joshua Fors, actually a reporter, and he's reporting about something called the Memory Olympics. I'm going to show you a bit of that in just a moment. But the Memory Olympics is an event, a yearly event, where people who've been working at, at getting their memory really good show off. They show off how much they can remember, how good they are at remembering items. Um, and they can be pretty darn good, as you'll see in, in a moment. And what Joshua was kind of questioning as a reporter is, what, what is it? Are these people just freaks of memory? Are they just really good at doing this? Or could anybody be a freak of memory? Is it just that they have learned strategies um, that can help them uh, remember things? And he ultimately ends up believing it's the second. He starts learning strategies and he gets himself into the memory Olympics and he believes anybody can. Uh, and so if you want to know that in detail, I'm going to give you a taste of it here. But if you want to know it in detail... There's your book, okay? But yeah, I'm going to show you sort of how we would do that. And remember, um, uh, remember, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this stuff in the middle here uh, in just a second. But remember when I told you that you can only keep about seven plus or minus two things in your working memory at a time. And so what I want to show you is how I can quite easily remember a list of 12 brand new items and um, 
and I can remember them in order. And not only will I be able to do this in front of you right now, but were you to ask me a week from now to give you this list, I would still be able to remember it and it would still be in order. It's a very powerful way to get something into long-term memory. Okay, so to try to impress you with this, I'm going to go out of here. And what I did over here is I found something that says random word generator. And just so you know that I'm not up to anything, I'm going to press refresh again. Um, just to, uh, just refreshed anyway. And so what I'm going to say is I want 12 words. Um, and give me, I don't know, 12 nouns just to make it a little easier. I don't care what the first letter is. I don't care about anything else. Sure. Oh, are they already? Okay, I'm going to create more. Generate. There we go. So every time I do this, it generates more. So just so you know, I'm not up to anything. Stop. Okay, here's the words. All right. And so now first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, record these words over here. Now, usually in class, I would just ask the students to give me words, and I would use those, but hey, this is the, the next best way to give you a sense that I haven't pre-memorized or anything like that. So, in fact, I'm, not, I'm trying not to even pay a whole lot of attention to them right now, other than enough to, to write them in here. Um, oh, sorry, that was career, cancer, not career. Year, description, professor, Ooh, that's weird, chapter, and promotion, and that should be 12. I don't know why there's a space here, let's pump that up. Okay, good. So there's our words, boom, let's bring this up again. Okay, so 12 random words. Um, here's the kind of technique you can do. So let me first make a little clear what I'm doing here. I'm going to be doing two things. So first of all, I'm going to be using association and imagery to bind these new words with something I already know. And then I will also be using that thing I already know to, to provide a sort of a hook to memory, to hook these things out that I've associated. So let me go a little slow. Let's start over here. What is this? This is my morning routine, at least in a non-pandemic world. So in my, in my typical day, I wake up in bed. I take Lola for a walk. Lola's my pup. Um, after the walk, I have breakfast. I take a shower. I get dressed. I get in the car. And then on my way, I drive past Mowat High School. I then drive past Highland Creek. Um, as I'm going, there's a church that I drive past on Lawson, and then I scoot on up, and there's that mosque at the bottom of Military Trail. Then I get into the parking lot. Then I get into class. Okay. Now, what's the importance of this? This is something already in my long-term memory. This is my morning ritual. It's already there, and it's very easy for me to retrieve these items because I just have to think about what I do every morning, right? So these are things that are already there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the new information and I'm going to stick it to this stuff. Um, and, and these things are going to be what help me fish the new information out. Okay, so let me let me start and, and just give you a sense. So what I want to do now is take this new information and I'm going to use imagery in, in various ways uh, to try to, and sometimes bizarre imagery, because bizarre imagery can be especially good. And I'm going to try to create things in my mind, okay? Using, by the way, my visual spatial scratch pad of my working memory, in case you're being geeky like that. Okay, so first one, wake up in bed, bathroom. Okay, I wake up in bed, all right, but my bed is in the bathroom for some reason. Somehow I'm sleeping in the bathroom in my bed. That's really weird. That's probably all I need for that one. Okay, fine. I get out of bed. I go to take Lola for a walk. Improvement. Um, as I'm trying to take Lola for a walk, it's, it's really not easy because they're making improvements to the waterfront trail where I like to walk. And those improvements are blocking our trail. And so there's signs everywhere and we have to walk around. And, I'm think, and I look down to Lola and I say, some improvements. This are, or maybe it'll be improved at some point, but not now. Okay, a little image from my head there. Of, of walking and the word improvement, okay? Now I'm going to take the next word, television. Have breakfast, television. Well, this would be really easy. I could just imagine sitting in front of the television and having breakfast. Kind of boring, but sure, 
<laughs> Why not? That's not very exotic. But let's imagine that I get my breakfast, I sit in front of the television, I watch it. Fine. Next one, personality. Okay, so now I'm taking a shower after breakfast. Personality, taking a shower. Um, I find, I notice today that when I take a shower, my personality is completely different from before to after the shower. When I go into the shower, I'm grumpy. I'm not feeling very good. When I come out of the shower, I feel so much happier, cleaner, ready to face the world. Showers change my personality. Okay, um, moving on. Getting dressed, movie. Getting dressed, movie. Okay, well... <laughs> As I get out of the shower and I'm getting dressed, I realize there's somebody outside my window with a movie camera taking a movie of me getting dressed. Okay, there's a pretty dramatic one. <laughs> I'm not really cool on this, at least not unless I'm getting paid or something. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll say that's enough for that one. So sometimes the more bizarre or crazy it is, that, that's enough. You, don't, you just get bizarre and crazy and that's all right. Um, okay, now um, physics and get in the car. Okay. Well, so I get in my car and I want my car to move and it's not moving. And, and suddenly I'm thinking, why is my car not moving? And I suddenly think, I bet, I bet Newton would know this because Newton's all about movement and acceleration and stuff. This is something I, a physicist should, should help me with. So I think about physics while I'm sitting in my car. Okay, cool. I get the car moving for whatever reason. Uh, and we're at cancer drive past mow it. And so what do, what do I see drive past mow it? They're trying to get me to come in and get the car washed because they have a drive to raise funds for cancer. And so they're saying, clean your car for cancer, something like that. Um, okay. Let's imagine that. All right, fine. Uh, and now I go to eight year drive past Highland Creek. Um, okay. Uh, as I'm driving past Highland Creek and I'm going through Highland Creek, I realize that it has been a year since I took this drive because of the pandemic. A whole year has passed by. And I think about that while I'm going by Highland Creek. Okay. Now, <laughs> where are we? Description. Drive past church. Description. Um, okay. As I go by the church and I look up at the stained glass window, it, it says, how would you describe your soul? Sure, let's make it religious. How would you describe your soul? So they're asking for a description. I'm like, wow, that's kind of kind of a powerful thing to ask somebody while they're driving into work in the morning. How would you describe your soul? That's what they're doing at the church. Okay, cool. At the at the mosque, e even weird weirder. As I go by the mosque, there's a sign outside the mosque that says "Professors' Day." All professors welcome. And I think, well, that's kind of weird. Mosque has Professors' Day. That's kind of interesting. Let's just go a little quick for these last two. Chapter, parking lot. Um, okay, so I'm, so I'm pulling into the parking lot now, finally. And um, I think I'm in the parking lot, and I stop, but I'm at, at a chapter store. Somehow I ended up at a chapter store. How the heck did that happen? That's weird. Anyway, whatever, I go where I'm supposed to be, and I eventually start walking to class. As I walk into class, the chair of my faculty is waiting for me before he goes into class and just to say, Steve, I want to give you a promotion. You've been doing so great this year. And so I get a promotion on my way into class. Okay. <laughs> Let me just go back now. And I'm going back just so I can't see anything that I just showed you. It's, it's still on that slide, but it's gone. That's all the learning I get. Okay, but now let's see what happens. Again, I can I know those first things. So the first one is I wake up in the morning, and now thanks to thanks to my um, imagery, I can say I wake up, but I woke up in the bathroom. So the first one's bathroom. I'm just going to write these down as I as I do them. Bathroom. Okay. So then I take Lola for a walk, but there were so this is you'll see some of the weird things that happen here. Uh, I want to say improvements. Yeah, they're making improvements to the to the walk um, as we go across and I and I have that image sometimes I get the gist right and the word wrong so I'm not a hundred percent sure right now it was the word improvements versus some other way of making something better but I think it was improvements so I'll stick with that for now okay I walk my dog come back and I and I eat and that was just in front of the TV just eat in front of the television so that one was easy um, I then went up for my shower and I know that the shower changes my personality right makes me happier 
Okay. Then I come out to get dressed, but when I got dressed, someone was taking a movie of me. So there was movie there. Um, okay. Then I went down to my car and the car wouldn't go. And I thought of, I thought of Newton and that's physics. I was thinking of physics as I went in there. Okay. I'm finally, I'm in the car. I'm going towards Mowat. They're having a drive for cancer. Cool. I go up by Highland Creek and it's been a year since I've been there. Um, I come up and I see the church and they're asking for a description of my soul. So description, I get to the mosque, it's professor day. Um, I go to the uh, parking lot and it's, it's uh, chapters in the parking lot. I got to instead of whatever. And then the class, I get a promotion as I walk into class. So as long as I have 12 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I have 12. They are bathroom, improvements, TV, personality, movie, physics, career, year, description, professor, chapters, production. Promotion. I'm sorry, promotion. That was my bad spelling. Promotion. <laughs> I can only hold seven plus or minus two items in my working memory, but when I do that kind of fancy encoding, what I've now been able to do is remember 12 words in order. And not only have I done that, but I've, I've sort of connected them to something I can use to pull them out of memory anytime I want, my morning routine. So if you ask me in office hours next week, can you recall that list? Now, I don't know how long, when I say office hours next week, I don't know how long after filming this next week will be for you. Um, but if you ask me that, what I will do is I will go through my, I'll start with wake up in bed. And I should be able to remember that the bed is in the bathroom. So these images will stick with me and will help me remember this. These are called mnemonics, strategies you can use to get lists of items into your memory. Um, and they work. 100%. You want to get better at putting stuff into memory, these mnemonics work. There's only one hitch, though. Oh, I'm going to show you this in a second. Yeah, let's let's do this. Okay, so this is, this is the Memory Olympics, and these are the two winners. I haven't watched this, so let's just watch a bit of this together. I think I actually have it now. I think I have it right here, ready, queued up, ready to go, yeah. Okay, what are these guys doing? Um, they sometimes do things like they have five decks of cards that they've shuffled all together. And these guys have each gone through the decks, the five decks, the 250, and they've memorized the cards. And that's what they're doing is they're telling you the cards in order. Okay, this isn't really exciting, <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> that would be more exciting than this. But what I would encourage you to do is check out any of these other things on the Memory Olympics. Um, I won't go through them in detail, but this probably would have been a better one um, to watch. Uh, so what you'll see is these people are able to do crazy, crazy, crazy memory feats. They can you know, get a bunch of things in their memory. Check it out. It'll blow your mind. It really will. But here's the hitch. When you go back to Joshua 4, what he said is, yeah, so these guys that are so great at memory, how are they doing in life? Not, not particularly well. <laughs> not particularly well. Um, it seems as though having a great memory is not all it's cracked up to be. And in fact, one of the things that Joshua 4 highlights is that in order to use these strategies that we're talking about, you have to put a lot of mental effort into it. You're using your working memory, right? This was a great example of working memory in use, me trying to memorize all these items. But when you're doing that, you're, you have to turn yourself off from the outside world. And so, for example, you're probably one of those people that says, geez, I hate when I meet somebody and then I forget their name. You know, and I wish I had remembered their name. So many of us feel that way. But let's imagine that situation. You're meeting somebody. And if that person says, hey, my name is Frederico, you can now do, you can, you, you have a choice right now. You can say, I want to remember that dude's name. So let me look at him. Frederico. What do I think of a Frederico? I think of some sort of, I don't know, Spanish conquistador with a sword. I'm going to imagine him with a sword and a big hat, like a, you know, meanwhile, Fred, Frederico is looking at you like, 
uh, hello, dude. <laughs> you know, so what most of us do is we don't go into this whole mental trying to remember his name. We talk to him. We engage with him socially in the external world. And because of that, his name just disappears, right? We don't do the work to hold that name um, and to keep it. But he, this is the critical point. So at that moment, we either have to decide what's more important to us, remembering Frederico's name or impressing Frederico by talking to him like a, like a good conversationalist. Most of us choose to do the social thing and we forget the name. These guys might be really good at remembering the name and nobody might like them because they're weird. When you talk to them, they go quiet and look in their eyes for a while. And that's like, yeah, okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> so the trade-off is, is exactly that. You know, you can have a fantastic memory, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and, and that's time and effort you have to pull from other things. And there are times when a lot of things we want to remember happen in a social context, and we either have to choose to stay in that social context or to go into our heads. Um, and, and it may seem like it would be great to have that great memory, but it costs us in, in, in terms of social stuff. And so it's always a trade-off of deciding when to use these strategies or not. Okay. Try these strategies yourself. Have a little bit of fun with them. Read the stuff in the textbook about encoding and mnemonics um, and check out stuff online. There's all kinds of cool stuff there too. All right. I'm going to leave this encoding lecture here though and I hope you guys all have a great day.